Don Ahern approached us as an engineering team and said, I want Snorkel to build the world's largest boom. So anytime that you create something complex like this, and really anything that's simple, something that you're creating from scratch, it all starts with a scope. What are you trying to do? Like it's gotta have a stable base, but that stable base has to be transported on a standard, you know, readily available trailer. It's got to reach out really far, but it's also gotta reach up really high. It's gotta stow in such a way that you can actually transport it to a job site. It's gotta be user friendly, you know? It's gotta do all that stuff, and you gotta interact all of those systems well, so that at the end of the day, the operator is just, During design, you can do many things uh, in parallel. You can be creating the program, the code. You can be creating the structures, the body structure, the cowlings. You identify critical path items, things that have to happen before another thing can happen, as well as things that you're not exactly 100% sure. It might be a concept in your head, but you take that concept and you research it. You use some R&D, you build a test fixture so that when you get it into its final design state, you get it actually onto the machine, you can be sure that what you have is gonna work well. We at Snorkel have made extensive use of our 3D printer, which allowed us to rapid prototype, scale models, to vet our designs before we actually went and produced those designs in steel. As soon as you're done with design, then you immediately go into the manufacture of the parts. You actually weld and cut the metal. You, you make the parts. Once the parts start to roll into the shop here at Henderson, then we start to assemble the parts to create the overall machine. We've worked with large steel fabrications before, but nothing really to this scale. So as the parts come in, we try as much as we can to compress schedule in that we're not just waiting for the entire bucket of parts to show up. We have timed the ordering and the delivery of those parts so that we can begin assembly of one subsection, one subassembly of the machine while we are waiting for other components to show up. So you get the parts in, you check them for quality, you make sure that it's exactly what you ordered. Uh, you start to put them together and most of the time i would say 90 95 percent of the time they fit together pretty well but you know you get uh, again being a prototype you, you have to massage you have to communicate back to the vendor you have to do everything in your power to make sure that what you're putting together meets print because those prints are the design and the design is what you put forth as a safe machine As you're assembling the machine, you're working with a multitude of different talents, different skill levels, welders, uh, mechanics, assemblers, electricians, all kinds of different people to put this, this machine together. And if you have created a good design and you have documented that good design, then you have a high likelihood of making those people successful, which ultimately leads to a successful build of the machine. I think it was happening when I see the engine start, the arms begin to all move and tires spin. That's when I think it was happening for real. It was alive. Well, in addition to going higher and with further reach than anyone has ever done, uh, we have also implemented many game-changing features in the worlds of safety as well as maneuverability. The single biggest challenge of this development was, was taking many different systems and making them all interact together in a way that was seamless to the operator. I really hope that this 
this development shows that that going bigger and, and going further out isn't isn't dead. There's a lot of development on the electrification of equipment, which is is cool. It's it, there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with electric motors, but also there's an old school side of me that just likes big hydraulics and big motors and, and big structures and you know creating something that can take a, a worker an operator higher and further than they've ever gone before and be able to reach more of a project than they ever have before there's just something really really cool about that to me there's no way that a project of this magnitude is successful without the help of the entire organization. When you think of snorkel, you think of controllability, maneuverability, lowest total cost of ownership, easy to service, and this machine takes that world to a whole new level.